Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. Recently I had the pleasure to participate in the Bill Ellis hosted Skull Competition and even though it was just something I was doing on the off hours of work, it was a lot of fun to just really come up with any crazy idea that just had to include one of his skull assets and then just make something completely bonkers out of it. I had this idea of creating this World War II-esque battlefield um, kind of like a trench warfare kind of scenario in which the skull is used as a different kind of motif throughout every shot. Now one of the things that was a bit tricky in the beginning is how do you make a convincing procedural bone texture? I've been using his assets for a very long time, but never in a truly naturalistic way. So I think what we will do is we'll just hop into Cinema 4D and then we'll be going back and forth with references and I'll, uh, yeah, should be fine. Alright, we're in Cinema 4D. I got the interactive renderer going on right here. And the first thing I'd like to discuss with you is basically the separation of materials. It has been separated into the bottom jaw and the top skull, and then we have the teeth on a separate layer as well. Now, if we look at references, if you look past the horrific nature of the imagery, we can see that there seems to be a distinction between the materials of the teeth and the materials of the surrounding bone. So let's hop into the teeth first and then we'll cover all the other materials. Just so you know, I am using Corona Renderer and I'm actually using Corona Renderer 7.0. If you are using Corona Renderer 6, you would be using a Corona Legacy material as opposed to a Corona Physical material. However, we won't really be using any of the special Corona 7 functionalities like Sheen Layer or Clear Coat Layer, and we will be focusing on the functionality of the Legacy material. Now, inside of the base layer, which would be your diffuse channel, I have a layer underneath the texture set. And then in here, if we open that up, you can see we're basically building up this teeth material with several noises, a bit of a gradient as a layer mask, and then we have one image right here. I'm going to turn all of these off, except for the noise. And I'm also going to turn off the subsurface scattering just so we can get a clear idea step by step what we're doing. All right, there you go. The first noise that we added just really creates the general color of your teeth. I'm using a cranial noise as I feel like that one most closely resembles the kind of veiny texture that we can see in teeth. And I have the global scale set to 600, making it really, really big. And you can barely see the definition between the colors. Now, I have left all of these settings exactly the same. And then when it comes to color, so for the color one, I have this slightly 26% saturated yellow. And for color two, I have this 14% saturated yellow. These colors have been color picked from photographic reference and I would very much suggest you doing the same thing anytime you're trying to create a naturalistic looking material. Cool. Now we're going to go up one and we're going to add a new shader and a noise shader. And this one we have set to multiply. So what I want to add on top is some very fine detail. So we have this FBM noise, which I believe stands for fine bump map or something like that. This is basically, if you set that to a global scale of 40, think of it as a high complexity noise inside of After Effects. It gives that very crisp dotted detail. So for this, because I knew I was going to be multiplying it as I basically just wanted to darken down the effect, I have selected this slightly more orange, 26% saturation, darker color. And this beige is now working with a pure white, which will then be excluded once we set that to multiply. Now, the reason I'm trying to darken this down is basically I created yellowish teeth as a base layer, now I'm going to be dirtying up these teeth until they get to a point where I feel like they look worn and like they look as if they've been inside of the sand for maybe decades. Now, the next thing that I want to do right on top of that is add a bitmap. 
just any black and white image that has some kind of stone texture. Something, so the one that I'm using here is one that was provided by Bill Ellis in his competition, which might not have been provided exactly for this kind of example, but it works very well for it. It seems to be something similar to a marble texture with some crunched up values, and really anything similar to this would work very nicely. Most of it is white, meaning that when we set that to multiply, we are basically excluding almost everything except for just a few darker imperfections here and there. The next thing that I wanted to add is another noise over here, which has a cranal mode and a global scale of 200, just slightly bigger than default. And when it comes to the colors, I have a 20% saturation yellowish and a 23% saturation orangish color. And basically this again is one more layer of dirt and discoloration that goes right on top. But I didn't actually want to multiply this because that would just make it even darker. What I wanted to do here is use a gradient as a layer mask. Now, what you can do is just go into shader and then create a gradient. And then inside of that gradient, I have the type set to vertical, 2D vertical. So it's going to go up and down. And then I have the turbulence set to 30. Now, as you can see, what the turbulence does is it basically just gives it a fractal noise that goes right on top kind of more similar to what some tooth discoloration would look like. We really want to have some kind of a fade of the discoloration into the material that we've been building before. So I have the gradient set to layer mask and the noise set to normal. And as you can see in the material preview here, we go from a slightly more clean orangey tooth into the dirtiest of possible teeth right down at the bottom. So back into the base layer, we can go to the reflection over here, which in this case is roughness in Corona 6.0 would be glossiness. And basically I've imported a crunch map that I've even lowered down the exposure of to be somewhat glossy, but not completely. Now, some of these parts are slightly glossier than others, but Generally speaking, teeth are pretty glossy if they are inside of your mouth because they're constantly covered by saliva. If they are out in the open, in the dirt, they probably won't be as glossy. They're probably going to be pretty dry. But specifically in the scene that I was going for, I had the skull set into this muddy environment with some water. So I did make sure to compensate for the wetness of these teeth. Now back down here, I have the IOR set to 1.6, which is pretty default. And then we have a bump channel with a normal as the texture. And there I'm just using a normal map that was provided by Bill Ellis that is connected to his skull model. So whatever skull model that you're using, if it is provided with a normal map, feel free to use it, of course. And yeah, so back down here, there is basically nothing too much we have to do except for of course subsurface scattering because one of the things that's most important when it comes to bone is making sure that your subsurface scattering feels correct try the experiment at home like take a torch from your phone and then like try to stick your phone into your mouth right behind your tooth and just shine the light through it you can see it has a lot of subsurface scattering i have a scatter fraction of 0.46 which as you can see here in the example just make sure that enough of that light shines through to the other side so we don't really have any of these harsh shadows on this side the radius being 3.2, if I were to increase the radius to, let's say, something like 100, you will see that it lowers the intensity of the subsurface scattering in one spot and basically scatters it more throughout the volume. And if I were to put that to something like a value of 0 0.4, you'll see that light shines through more intensely in one spot, but it doesn't fog out the entire object as much. So a value of 3.2 really 
just hit the spot. When it comes to the scatter color of teeth, it's nothing to do with the red spectrum and definitely get away from the blue spectrum. It's really just a bit more of a yellowish tint to the original white bone color. So I just went for a very simple 22% saturation and 34 degree hue and that's it. Yeah, cool, perfect. That's everything we need to do for the teeth material. So it's time to move on to the bone material. Now the bone material is made up of a layered material that consists of the bone base material and then two dirt materials that are then separated out with a little bit of a crunch map that we can then control the intensity of the dirt through this amount slider over here, depending on what we ended up needing for this shot. Let's start with the bone base and then we'll have a look at the dirt materials just for the hell of it. Let me turn off the subsurface scattering. And if you look at the preview, you'll see kind of what changes. It just becomes a little bit darker on all the edges over here. Again, inside of the base layer, we have a similar roughness texture and a similar bump texture. And we have the IOR set to 1.6. And in the texture, we have a layer again. Now here we have a very similar setup with a noise cranial set to 600 with just slight variations on the colors that we have color picked. And then we have a FBM with a darker variation of color one, but still set to white on the second color as we will be multiplying that. Then we have the same bitmap that we previously used. Then we have a noise with some slightly stronger color picked values and a layer mask. Now for this layer mask, what I did is I used the 3D spherical layout. Now that really makes sure that the texture wraps around nicely around the shape of this rather spherical object. And I have the turbulence set to about 30 and generally speaking, all these settings stay the same. If you set that gradient to layer mask and you put that other noise on top, you can kind of see what happens. We have some areas that are using the stronger yellowish values and then we transition into the dirtier grungy map. When it comes to the subsurface scattering over here, I have a very, very similar scatter color, basically the same but we have a lower radius as what we want is the light to hit this skull but not shine through it as much as this is supposedly a much thicker volume. Uh, look, look at that, look at how much light we reintroduce into this thing just by adding the subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is your friend. Even though subsurface scattering can eat up some of your render time, generally speaking, I render farm most of the things that I need to do or I plan my shots to be rendered overnight. If, if you can't do it, you know, sure. But if you can, definitely a recommendation. Now that's basically it for the bone material. It's really about make sure you look at reference, color pick some of the colors and then stack some noises. A cranial noise works great for just the general flow of the transition of the colors. And then the FBM noises are the ones that really add all that fine detail when you start stacking. And then just add some extra layers and use some layer masks to be able to create that natural procedural variation. So let's have a look at the two dirt materials that we have here. Now, dirt material one is basically a layer material with a quixel dirt texture. And then I have added a soft light with a FBM noise to kind of more match the dirt intensity and colors that I was looking for, just adding a bit more of a warmer tone. And that would then integrate it more with the skull texture that we had underneath. And then finally, I have this, um, marbly bitmap that's going right on top set to overlay which um, both of these are at a pretty low intensity as you can see they are just making sure to balance out the color of the texture when it comes to roughness over here you want some pretty high values you want it to be pretty rough make sure that the dirt creates almost no highlights and no glossy peaks IOR set to 1.6 and then again the bump we have we're using the same thing for dirt texture 2 we have basically the same 
except for I am using just the noise, just the cranial noise with uh, these two colors that I have picked here and the overlay. I'm not even using a bitmap over here. The thing with dirt is that as long as your roughness value is pretty low, if you are stacking it on top of another material, it's usually enough. It usually does enough. If you have a roughness and a bump that has some detail, you can just get away with using some noises and some colors. Now let me quickly show you what would happen if I increase these dirt materials to, let's say, a amount of one and an amount of one over here. We've added a little bit more dirt, but what I would like to do here is I'm just going to increase the exposure of some of these grunge maps that I have going on. Yeah, there you go. Especially here on this top left corner, you can very clearly see how much the dirt is adding to the entire look. Now, down here at the bottom, we have some more of these specs, and generally speaking, depending on the mask that you're using, the dirt can be integrated very nicely. So, the one tip I would like to give you is really use two dirt maps at varying degrees. As you can see, the bottom one here is using a mask that, generally speaking, covers everything, but at a lower opacity. And then the top dirt layer is the one that's using a more high-detail grunge map with some sharper peaks. And those will be your, let's say, clusters of dirt. That's really where the dirt is sticking, and then the rest is just fogging out the entirety of your skull. I feel like that's everything I need to cover when it comes to procedural bone texture. Just a quick tip on how you can generate your procedural bone texture. I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's useful to you. Whenever you're doing some skull stuff or bone stuff, you can get some use out of this. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check out my ArtStation page. This is usually where I'm posting most of my CG work. Um, Eric and Gabby, I'm sure that next time they're on, they'll be able to drop their... Uh, their pages of where you can find their work. On the ArtStation page, you can come to the ArtStation store as well. Here we have several free products and a bunch of products that will make your life as a visual effects artist or as a filmmaker a little bit easier. You know, just things that we have been needing throughout projects and now they're available for you to use as well. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date to all of our future tutorials. We have a new lighting mastery tutorial coming up with Eric. We will be recording that this week. This will be about Grant Wood, who has a very interesting lighting style that was pretty tricky to replicate. So yeah, thank you very much and I hope you have a great night. Talk to you soon. Cheers and bye-bye.